I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. Honey, today you are talking about rejoicing. Rejoicing, yes. Joy. And you know, one of the things that I quote every morning, because I'm not a morning person. I don't like morning, <laughs> unless morning started at noon. Yeah. And so I have to quote the scripture that says, today is a day that the Lord has made, right. and I choose to rejoice right. and be glad in it. And so, you know, we can choose to rejoice, or we can choose yeah. to be glad or sad. You know, there, uh, Paul says rejoice, and then again I say rejoice. That's right. You That's know, right. Uh, just because you messed up, it's no, no use to get down. Rejoice because God is a master restorer. And we can go to him with and tell him, say, hey, listen, I'm sorry I messed up. And he will restore you and restore your joy. Yes. And you can rejoice because he never leaves you out or hangs you out to dry, as we used to say. That's he right. is always there to help you to lift you up. So let's go right now where I'm talking about Always Rejoice. I'm going to talk about Always Rejoice. You know, in life, we, we all face problems. and We face heartaches and disappointments. Let us go look at the Bible. And as we read, we'll see that God's people experienced all kinds of things. They had problems, but they also had a reason to rejoice. Let's go to Habakkuk 3. Habakkuk 3. The prophet here is saying, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. Hey, that's, a, that's pretty bad right there. No, no figs, no fruit on the vines. Though the labor of the olive oil may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flocks may be cut off from the foal, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. He will make me walk on my high heels. Now, it wasn't God bringing problems. We know that. It's the devil that brings problems. He comes to kill and to steal and destroy. Actually, he is the root behind all of the evil and bad things that's going on in the world. But he uses that to attack God's people with sorrow and problems and circumstances, all kinds of things. But here the prophet said, in all the things that we read there that were bad, they didn't know no food, no, no cattle in the stalls, so forth and so on. He said, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. See, it was his decision to rejoice. You ever notice that? He's saying here, although the circumstances are bad and there's no cause to rejoice, yet with God, there's still a cause to rejoice. You know, sometimes we get in situations and that's the only thing we can do is look to the Word of God and rejoice. Our joy is found in God, in the things of God, in the Word of God. Now, let's look at Israel for just a moment. Israel was God's people in the natural. We, born again Christians, are God's children in the spiritual realm. Here, they were in exile, and 
Zion, or Jerusalem, lay in waste. But God promised restoration and joy. Isaiah 51. Go to Isaiah 51. The prophet's writing here. While they were in exile, the prophet's writing. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it. Thanksgiving and voice of melody. Now, that's in the New King James. Let's read it in the NLT. It gives a little better understanding. Yes, think about Abraham, your ancestor, and Sarah, who gave, gave birth to your nation. See, it was, through, it was through Isaac, Abraham and I, I, Sarah's son, that Jacob came, who became Israel, and, the twi- and then the 12 sons of Jacob became the 12 tribes of Israel. And so I'll give you a little background. That's what he's saying here. He's saying, look, look back, here it is. And he goes on to say, Abraham was only one man when I called him, but I blessed him and he became a great nation. The Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on, on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden. Her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Now, according to Albert Barnes in his notes on the Bible, he said Judah here represents, is represented as lying in waste. It is to be remembered that the, the time to which the prophet here refers is of the captivity and near its close. Of course, as they would have continued 70 years, in so long a period, Judah would have become almost extinct and, wilderness, and, and a wilderness. You see, they were in exile for 70 years. No one was there to, there was nothing there in Judah and, and Jerusalem to take care of anything. Anytime, have you ever watched in your neighborhood a house that nobody's taken care of and you watch it just, you know, goes to nothing. But here, God is reminding Israel that he raised, he, that he raised Israel up to become a nation and Israel became a nation through the miraculous conception of Isaac. And from there, God blessed and increased the Israelites until they become a mighty nation. What we need to realize is the same God that brought them forth from a miraculous beginning would also bring them back to a miraculous restoration of their homeland. You know, God promised a mighty restoration to Jerusalem and there would be joy and gladness. Well, if you do any study, you'll find out that Zion is a type of the church. So we can see that this is a picture that God wants to, wants to do in our lives. He wants to restore us. You know, the church, you know, you're a part of the church that had a miraculous beginning. You were miraculously born again. The same God that provided salvation for you miraculously is the same God that wants to provide for you the same way today. The day we can trust God to restore all of the things that have been messed up. Hello? Now, you may not be there, but I mean, I've, I've 
I've messed up and, and you know, and things have got in a mess, but God was always there to help me out. Okay? How many of you have ever messed up? But God is always there to restore. Just like God worked mightily for Israel, God will work mightily for you today. He's already done that. How did he do it? Well, we were changed from sinners to the children of God. We were rejected by people, but now we're accepted by God. We, we had no reason to rejoice, but now we have every reason to rejoice. Through Christ, we can rejoice no matter what's happening around us. Now, as we're talking about joy, and, re and of course rejoice is just <laughs> part of joy. Uh, just, you just add on the prefix R-E and, <laughs> and you got rejoice, you get rejoice. Now go to John 16, 24. 16, 24. John 16, 24. John 16, 24, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He said, until now, you have not asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. You see, Jesus is preparing them for him to go away and then for them to go to the Father in the name of Jesus. If they go to the Father in the name of Jesus, God himself, it's as if Jesus is asking for that to be done in their life. The Message Bible says it like this, ask in my name according to my will and he will most certainly give it to you that your joy will be a river overflowing its banks. I believe that some people don't have a level of joy in their life that they could have is because they don't take, they don't take everything to God. They try to handle situations themselves and they, then they never go to God with a problem until it gets so bad that they say, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Go to God first. Go to God first. See, God is ready to answer if we'll ask him. He's not going to come down and, and do it for you. You've got to ask him or you have got to go to him with the word, present the word, say, all right, Heavenly Father, this is what you said in your word. This is what you said that I could have. This is your, what you said. It's sort of like, you know, you work at a job. They tell you that after you've worked there a certain length of time that you have vacation. Well, they are not going to come down and tell you, you need to go take a vacation. But you can go to them and say, listen, it, I, it, I, I have accrued this amount of vacation. I'm going to take so many days of vacation and give, tell them when it is. You have to go and ask for what they have already said is yours. That's the way it is with God. He's already said this is yours, but you got to go and ask. Hello, ask the Father. See, we have every reason to rejoice, always. Because God is a prayer answering God. Now, you know, as we look at all of this, we find, uh, as I, I was looking at this, uh, A.T. Robertson, he was a, a great minister, and he had, uh, he, he lived from 1863 to 1934. He authored the word pictures in the New Testament, and he said, God is with, 
is with us in whatever befalls us. It is God, God's will that we find joy in prayer in Christ Jesus in every condition of life. You know, God desires to work in our lives mightily. But are we letting him? We have to not limit him by not asking. We limit God to minister in our lives when we don't ask for what belongs to us. Come on, you there, you're going home. You're awful quiet. You see, you got to go and claim it. Claim what, what he said belongs to you. Now, I could say to William or to Vidar or Tad or Bill or Christian over there, any, I could say to any of them, hey guys, listen. I have, uh, there's, uh, there's some things that, that I, I want to give y'all. They're, they're out there on the table. Just go, just go pick out what you want and take it. Okay? It's going to stay there until they go out there and do something about it. Am I right or wrong? That's the way the promises of God are. We can't joy in the promises of God until we go and say, okay, Father, you said this in the name of Jesus. I thank you now for this coming to pass in my life. And then some say, well, I don't see it. Hey, just rejoice anyway because it's happening. See, that's where your faith comes in. And I don't have time to go that direction, so I'll just stop right there. Okay. <laughs> Say this with me. God desires to work in my life and I can rejoice. We have every reason to rejoice. Now, as we begin to look at this, we can't talk about rejoicing or being joyful without going to Paul's writings. Philippians 4.4. 4. Some of you are already ahead of me. Philippians 4 4. Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Always. What's always mean? All the time not just part of the time, not just when everything is going good. It's easy to rejoice when everything's going good, right? He said rejoice in the Lord always. That means in the good times, in the bad times, and in the in-between times, all the time. Now, that's, the voice says it like this. Most of all, friends, always rejoice in the Lord. I never tire of saying it, rejoice. The J.B. Phillips New Testament says, delight yourself in God. Yes, find your joy in him at all times. You know, you have to realize that when Paul wrote this, he is lying in a prison, actually more like a dungeon type than just a prison. We think of a prison, but when they, they talk about prison here, it's, it's like a dungeon. It's not anything close to what we've seen. You know, maybe he's thinking here, I know what I'm talking about because I'm in a tough situation, but I'm rejoicing in the Lord anyway. Hello. Rejoice. And then one part, he says, and again, I say rejoice. 
Rejoice. Joy is one of the greatest characteristics of the Christian. The world cannot understand it. Although when we lose a loved one, I bought both my mom and dad, my, some of my cousins that I grew up with, more like brothers and sisters than cousins, because dad was, if he was, he only pastored those four churches, and if, when he wasn't pastoring, he was out traveling in the traveling ministry. And me and my sister would stay at, at, at my Aunt Anolita's, that's his sister, and she had five kids. And so we all just uh, <laughs> grew up together. And you know, there is a sadness, but on the other hand, Christians re rejoice at the same time. And the world can't understand this because for them, it's the end. For us, it's just, hey, see you later. Hello. You see, but the world can't understand that because they don't have the joy of the Lord on the inside of us. We have the joy of the Lord. See, our joy is independent of things on this earth because its source is from the redemption that Christ bought at Calvary. Joy has nothing to do with material things. It has nothing to do with circumstances and situations. It has to do with us rejoicing because we know God. Christians should be the most happiest people there is. I trust you enjoyed what we were saying to you about rejoicing. You know, you make a choice whether you're going to rejoice or whether you're going to be down. You know, so many people let things keep them from having a great day. You can have a great day every day if you'll choose to rejoice in the Lord and let him take care of your problems. So rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. You know, honey, I was thinking about because Philippians is one of my yes. favorite uh, books of the Bible. Right. And I think about, you know, uh, Paul was in prison. Yeah. And he when was, he wrote Philippians, yes, he was in prison. Uh -huh. And he was writing to the Philippian church. And on, in one of the chapters, he said, Would rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. And again, I say, say rejoice. rejoice. You know, sometimes I say, if it were us in prison, I, you know, I just wonder what we would write. Some, yeah. some would write grumble in the Lord always. <laughs> and again, I say grumble. <laughs> but we do need to rejoice. Yes, we do. Yes. Hey, we have an interesting offer for you to this, this month. And actually, we have one of my dad's, I guess, one of the favorite books that people like, Plan, Purposes, and, Re and Pursuits. And then we have uh, a CD by me called Walking with God. And, an, and the three CD series, Fresh Anointing from Dad. And then three CDs by me. And three CDs by Miss Lynette. All of these are for a gift of $45 or more. But now we're going to, if you order that, we're going to throw in this little book, How to Walk in Love, just as, as, a, as a free gift yes. to you. So go right now to your computer and order these. Go to rhema.org and, and order these because you're going to want to get a hold of these because they are, they, they will, will help, help you. you. Yes, they will. They will. Hey, listen, in August 21 to 23, yes. two weeks away, yes. uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, 
at Kissimmee, Florida at Kingdom Life International Christian Center with Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Estrada. We haven't missed their names. They are <laughs> Kenneth and Lynette. And they are <laughs> Kenneth and Lynette. We have a great time with them yes. over that. And then we're going to move up the 24th through the 26th. We're going That's, to Savannah, Georgia for a Living Faith Crusade. Yeah, Wednesday through Friday. That's right, at the Seed Church with Pastors Lisa and Kempy Womble. And if you want to know anything about it, just go to rhema.org and all the details are there. And hey, I want you to, to uh, come and see us or let people yes. in that area that are friends of yours know that we're there and That's come right. and be with us. That's right. We, at the Crusades now, we have many people that are, they, they hear about it on the television and they yes. drive in from uh, some of them from other states. We've had That's several right. coming in. So we want to invite you to come and on, be with please us. Please come up to see us and yes. tell us that you uh, watched us on television. Yeah. That's now, right. Hey, in September, you've got a big thing coming up called Kindle the Flame. That's right. September the 22nd through the 24th. It is going to be an awesome, awesome time. We have some great speakers, Brenda Thomas, Anna Grisham, Julia Post, and Kara McKenna, and of course, Denise and myself, yes. our daughter. This is, this is Lynette and Denise's Women's Conference at September 24th through 22 through 24. And hey guys, get your lady there. My wife has a different way about, she says, if I'm going to have a women's conference, the Lord dealt with her several years ago. She said, it's not going to be the, you know, so many times at a women's conference, they talk about being victims. And you said, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> no, we it's, are a victor, you guys. <laughs> it's a different women's conference. And I guarantee you, your lady will come back different after the con So, hey, make sure yes. she gets there, okay? You know, we are enrolling for the fall That's semester right. of Rainbow Bible, Bible, Bible College. College 20, uh, you know, just go to rbtc.org and you can get all the information right there. And you can even apply online right That's there. Right. You can fill out an application. That's right. Well, we want to thank all of you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. The enemy will try to discourage you. And so if the enemy's trying to, to trip you up, know that there are great plans in store for you. And so it's important that you set your face like flint. If I can, you can. Three wonderful CDs by Lynette Hagan. I mean, it don't make no difference. I'm hanging on to God. I don't care what comes or what goes. Plus, an anointed CD by Kenneth W. Hagan, Walking with God. Learn to live in His presence. And a classic book and three timeless CDs by Kenneth E. Hagan. And the mini book, How to Walk in Love, free when you order today's package. All of these amazing faith tools can be yours today for a gift of only $45 or more. Just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on to rhema.org anytime, day or night to order. For Canadian orders, visit RaymaCanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit Rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.